So here we go as we continue this particular teaching. I think we now we have a, have a connection. Now, we were looking up Pata and Macy in particular, Macy for Gerald Macy's work right here, um, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, the Sign Language and Mythology. Um, here, uh, which reference should we go to? Let us try the second reference to this, the second um, click to this. What we're seeking to link now is the potter, the symbology of the potter that we find in Isaiah chapter 64 and 8, you understand, with the father of modern Africa. Now, this version right here, we want to show you this. This version right here, if you look at this, you can download this. So if you go to this version right here, sometimes they have more than one version. They have a downloadable version. You can download it as a PDF. You understand? A free copy, and you can study it offline. This is a PDF that you can download. Now, here is the significant part that we were referencing right here where it talked about the earliest form of a divine fatherhood was outlined, though not perfected, in the pygmy, in the one who was called the pygmy Pata. Hence, one of his titles is the father of fathers, which indicates the fatherhood that was founded on the eldest brother. Did you did you get that right here? Now he's the pygmy pata. You understand the pygmy pata also likened to his majesty. Hence, one. You understand. Hence, it says one of his titles is the father of fathers father of modern Africa, which indicates the fatherhood that was founded on the eldest brother. Who is the eldest brother? In the Christological senses, the eldest brother is Jesus Christos. Now it says that Ptah was a solar god who did not attain the status. He did not attain to the status of Re or of Ra. Now, what we looked up um, next Let's go over here and, and look this up. We looked up Pata. Now we're looking up specifically in this particular book, as you can see, Pata, and it's been saved right there, Pata and Father. According to this book, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World, A Work of Reclamation. This is volume one by Gerald Macy. Now, in the in the... And in this particular book, let's see, is it is it going through? You understand? Let's see. Let's click again. Um, there's about 40, I think about 45 or so references. There's about 100 or so references to Pattaya here. And here's about, oh, actually 65. There are 65 results for Pattaya, Pattaya and Father. Now, remember, Pattaya was that... Um, God or Elohim, who according to the ancient Egyptians, made man on the potter's wheel. You understand? Now here it says right here that the archetypal man as his son. The archetypal man is his son Atum, from which we get our Adam, Adam as well, right? Adam also can come from that Atum, from a lump of plastic, what? of plastic clay. So plastic is not even new. We are also witnessing the creation of man or of tomb, it says. Let's see if we can um, go into this one on page uh, 437 and enlarge it somewhat. Let's see if we can get a larger, a larger uh, click and a larger link a larger link to this particular area right here. Now there's much in there's much in this, but we're going to try to at least focus it focus it on the aspect that um, we are referencing for for now you can see over here you can see all the different links over here. So this would if we were to go through each one of it will be here a very long time. So we have to select you understand we have to select um, We'll start from here. We're talking about the Hebrew book of Genesis, right? It said that these became the seven souls of Ra or Atum Re, Atum Re, otherwise called the seven souls of man. The seven as elements or powers 
that went to making of the names in our mentor or the human being when the rendering was literalized, when the rendering or interpretation now was made literal. Thus, the evolution of man, according to the Egyptian wisdom, was from seven powers of the elements on which a doctrine of the seven souls was founded. Now, biblically speaking, these are the seven spirits that we find that stand before the face of, 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 of God and stand before the face of Christ or the Lamb. It now says six of these had been pre-human souls. The seventh alone attained the human type and status, whether as the child Horus, and the Horus is the Cherui, you understand the Cherui, or the chosen, the child elect, or the man as Atum, the first father. You know, there's something very cryptic in the Bible. There's a lot of things cryptic in the Bible, actually, because we have to go back into the crypts and get that knowledge. You understand to recognize what that true knowledge is. You understand because a lot of people read the Bible, you understand from a, a westernized and an ignorant version of Christianity, not recognizing the true context of the Bible. There's the part in the Bible where it talks about your first father's sin. Your what? Your first father. I think it's also in Isaiah which speaks about this first father type. Here we, we can make the connection with this first father type where it says, these souls of life had been identified and divinized in the mythology, the soul of water as the fish of the Sobek or Sebek. And Sebek is also contained in the Bible, but unfortunately, um, many are lost in mistranslation. So in the translation, they don't find it. But that, that, um, that ram that's found in the Abraham time when he was sacrificed and went to sacrifice his son was named Sobek as well. But here it speaks about the fish of Sobek, the breathing force as the lion of Shu, the creeping thing of earth as the beetle of Kapar Ptah. Isn't it interesting that in the creeping coup, the what? The creeping coup against his imperial majesty, that they would present him with a, this kind of a greenish or so beetle, a Volkswagen beetle, right? And his majesty asked them, you understand, you know, are you come to take me away in this, you know, in this beetle? But notice right here this kind of connection with Ptah and the Khepar, right? Such was the creation of man, according to the Egyptian wisdom, the seven elemental powers then furnished his seven constituent parts or seven souls as co-workers, as co-workers with Ptah and merged themselves in Atum or were, or were absorbed in created man. In the second chapter of Genesis, the God, Ayahu or Yahu, Yahu, succeeds the Elohim. As an Egyptian deity, Ayu or Yahu or Ayahu was the son of Ptah, the oneness of the father and son. And you see this right here, the oneness of the father and son with the son as what? Representative of the father is a doctrine or a timherit or a talmud or a teaching that was founded in the cult or rather the culture of Ptah, the culture of Ptah at Memphis and perpetrated in the religion of Atum Re at Anu or Anu. This is all so biblical. We'll touch on the biblical links of this as well. It is Atum who says he is both the closer and the opener. Doesn't it sound like Revelation? The one who has the keys of David, who opens and no one closes, who closes and no one opens. And he is but one. And he is but one in the ritual chapter 17. And it is the father, whether as Ptah or as Atum, who comes into being as his own son, 
also when Osiris or Osar has been mutilated by the murderer suit, he is reconstituted by Cherui or by Horus. And the father lives again in and as the son. It was by his ever coming and continual rebirth that the son brought life and immortality or continuity, the continuity to light, or for us, the continuity of the illumination as the demonstrator in phenomena, in this phi numen, on behalf of God the Father, as we are doing on behalf of our God Father. But there's just a little bit more that's very interesting about this, so that when we are looking at, for example, where we were looking at um, Isaiah, it was in Isaiah chapter chapter 64. In Isaiah chapter 64, let's bring it over here. Isaiah chapter 64. See, 64, and we were down here, 64 and 8. But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, thou art our potter, and we all are the work of thy hands. Remember the link from um, Psalm, Psalm 12, where it speaks about the wrath? Look at the next verse. Be not wroth very sore, I do to I father his father, father of the house, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are begging you. We are all thy people. We are all thy people. So, you see, in a lot of times there's this acknowledgement now, you know what I'm saying, that you are, you know what I'm saying, our father, Abba. You are our father. We are the clay. You molded us. You made us. You are our worker. You're the one who has worked us, crafted us. You are our potter. You are our pata. And we are all the what? The work of thy hand. So this is now significant. The footnote down here in the Schofield is significant as well. Speaking of the national father, bringing the New Testament sense about the believing or the trustworthy um, Israelite was born anew, that rebirth. But it says that the Old Testament scriptures show no trace of the consciousness of personal sonship. But how interesting that we find in Proverbs, you know what I'm saying, where it says, do you know his name, and do you know the name of his son? You know what I'm saying, where we find in the Psalms that Israel is likened is the son. I have uh, I've said, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. You know what I'm saying? So it's also very important to recognize where this is a good, this is a good footnote here. But it's not fully perfected, you understand, because the half of the story, even as Macy brought this out many years ago, back in 1907, but he was blackballed because he knew that it was the black that was at the root. And he defied, you understand, uh, Christendom, you understand, or the white Christendom and exposed their hypocrisy to their face with all of this evidence that only recently now has become available even in this form here where it can be downloaded. You know, you can see this. You can download this to your, you know, to your um, digital mobile device, your computer. You can read it as a book, so forth and so on, and study this free. But a lot of this was suppressed. So Daniel's prophecy comes into effect right here where it says they shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase because a lot of this knowledge was sealed up for, 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 for years, you understand, for some of them for 50, 100. This is 1907. This was 1907. But furthermore, Macy says this, and we want to um, include this in our evidence, that the earliest Egyptian type of a creator is the molder or potter. Do you see that right there? The earliest type, you understand, of a creator is the molder, the one who molds something, or the potter. The god Kanum, for example, is depicted as the potter in the act of forming man 
from the matter of earth. Pata, it says right here, sometimes called the son of Kunum, is likewise the what? The divine potter, the very same divine potter we have here in, in uh, Isaiah 64 and 8. He is portrayed at Phile, or Phile, Phile, in the act of heaping plastic clay upon the potter's table from which he is about to form the image of man which he had sketched in the likeness of child Horus or the child Cherui. Now the child Cherui is likened now to the son of man or the Lij Teferi in Rastafari revelation. Now previously the goddesses and gods or the sons and daughters were shaped in the likeness of zoo types. You understand? Or the zoo types or the animal types. Now Kunun himself was ram headed. Cheper, the former, was beetle headed up to the time of Ptah. Notice that right there. Up until the time of Ptah, or uh, where is it? Up until the time of Ptah, where's the line? Or Bess, the Negroid pygmy, the Negroid midget, the Negroid dink, the dink, not dink, but the dink the Negroid pygmy, the human likeness was not given to any god up until the time of Ptah or Bess. So we can say that Ptah and Bess were the first human likenesses of divinity. And his son Atum Horus is the earliest divinity in perfect human form, or he is the perfect black as our black Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as Egyptian Atum is the original of the Hebrew Adam, it follows that we are witnessing the creation of Adam from the earth in a mythical representation when Ptah, the potter, when he shapes the archetypal man as his son Atum, from a lump of what? From a lump of plastic clay. We are also witnessing the creation of man or of Tum, the son of Ptah in human likeness when the associate gods or the Ali, the Eli, or Elohim created the sight of the eyes and the hearing of the ears the breathing of the nostrils, and sent up that which gave pleasure to the Father, that is, to Ptah, who is the father of Tum in this creation of man by the put cycle of the primordial powers, which corresponds to the first creation of Adam, the first creation of Adam, by the Elohim in the first chapter of the Hebrew Genesis. Then was ordained the utterance of every decision of the tongue which repeats the deliberation of the heart. Then was ordained, it says, the utterance of every decision of the tongue which repeats the deliberation of the heart. Now, as we just go a little bit more forward with this, now it says that the creation of the gods, that is to say, of Tum and his associate or his brother gods and, and sister gods, was when proclamation was made of all the divine names in his wisdom. The associate gods or the Elohim in his presence are as the teeth and lips, the joints and hands of Tum, for these become the associate gods, or the associate gods become the members and powers of Tum, Atum, or Adam, the created man, who was formed in the likeness of Ayu, Ayu Elohim, or Yahweh Elohim. 
Yahweh Eloheinu. We are told in the text that men are mortal since the time of Re. That men became mortal in the time of Re. That is, since the time when a father in heaven or in Amenta was depicted in the image of man instead of being represented by some pre-human or totemic type. This was Atum. Atum in the solar mythos was Ray in his first sovereignty. And Atum equals the Hebrew Adam was primordial man. Otherwise stated, Atum was the first God delineated in the human form, hence Men are mortal or human since the time of Atum Re. Previously, they might be imaged as beetles or frogs in the time of Ptah, as the so-called Kaf apes in the time of Tehuti or Tat, as crocodiles in the time of Sebek or Sobek, as the hippopotami, g- g- giraffes or black vultures, in the time of Sut or Seti, this difference betwixt the animal and human types is also recognized in relation to Re or Ra. When the first creatures or beings are called, quote, the ancestors of Re and the ancestors of Seb or the Seb and are designated worms, You know, when David says, I am but a worm, and how the worm is also used scripturally, they understood this. We don't. We need to understand this again. So they are designated worms to express their inferiority. They were more reptiles in comparison with the human type. In the Hebrew Genesis, when the man, as Adam was created, he was to have dominion over all creatures of water, air, and earth. And Atum, or Tum, in the ritual, chapter 79, is also designated as the Lord of all creatures. That is when he makes his appearance in the figure of a man, of man, who is described as being, quote, in the form of the Lord of all creatures in the ritual chapter 82, or as the true primordial black man, the archetypal, not the modern nigga, not, not where we fell to, but from where we fell from. Atum, who comes as the unique one God in the form of man, is hailed in the ritual as the Lord of heaven who issues forth from the earth and created whatever is begotten and, quote, he or who gives vigor to the men now living. Also, I am summed up as Atum, says the speaker. As Atum, he exclaims, I am a soul, and my soul is divine, Melakotawi. It is is the self-originating force. The speaker in the character of Atum Re, who makes his advent as man, explains that the seven Uraeus divinities formed his body, but his soul, his soul is divine. It is an image of the eternal. These Urei, were the type, were a type of the seven primordial powers that were grouped and unified in one, whether as God or man. They are companions, seven in number, who became the associate gods of Ptah in his creative work and who were afterward absorbed in Atum as constituents of his body or the means of his embodiment as man. Now, there's, of course, there's much more to be actually connected with this, and we could probably go on 
for quite some time with this, but it's important to at least point ones in the right direction to overstand that link now, Rastafari Revelation, you understand, and such scriptures as we have right here in chapter 64 and verse 8. But now are there two. Thou art our Father, we are the clay, and we are the clay. Thou art our, thou our potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. 